Um, all right, uh, front brake pads and rotors. Let's try this one. The air cleaner one last uh, round didn't seem to go out so well. Uh, seeing how the car didn't seem to have a real air cleaner. Um, let's at least do something we know we can do, front brake pads and rotors, because we know we have those. Uh, so let's, hopefully I have the right parts. Um, let's go ahead and pop this wheel up. We're going to jack this up, pop this wheel off, and uh, get going. Reposition the camera. So, this one you guys are going to get a better view because I've got better cordage here. I'll try to stay out of the way of the main camera. Try to stay out of the way of the main camera while I do this. Alright, I didn't put the tools away like I said I would. Gun. It's on the other side of the car. Alright. Once again, I'm using my 19 and a half socket. To help ease with removing and lug nuts. These fit, these fit better as this swells up because of rust. <laughs> and I guess it, I didn't jack it up at all. Woo wee boy, I'm getting tired. I've never done that in my life. Off. I took my hat off. Go in the house, get a drink of water, and get the USB plug back into it when I walked away with the hat off. Alrighty then. Now we can wheel off. Just to sit on it. Alright, we got the 13 is what it feels like. I'm just replacing these, not inspecting. So when I bought this car, these brakes were pretty new. Quite a heavy pulsation though. There's not running right over my way. Uh. There's a pulsation. Wow. I'm gonna have to go in the basement to get my blue van. Damn it. Pads don't look too bad. Here they are. Alright, so I'm setting these up here. I don't want to hang it on the hose, so I'm setting it up here. It's kind of setting on the side right in. 
I need to remove these bolts right here. Not sure what size those are, but they feel like 15. More guessing than feeling. Fifteen it is. Okay. I'm gonna have to gather up some tools in there. Definitely gonna go in the basement to get my lubricant. Because I'm not putting these brakes on dry. These slides that feel like crap. I guess before I go too crazy though, I should see if this caliper is going to go in easy or if it's going to bite me the whole way. Pack compressor. So you can take a C clamp, go around. This is crap on it. So take the inside pad right over a piston. Take your compressor. Slowly compress it down. Take as much spiral out of that hose as you can. It should go in nice and easy like it is. It shouldn't take effort at all. If it's taking effort, you're doing something wrong. Now, if it's a rear caliper and it's got the parking brake assembly on there, then this is not how you do this. That's done differently. You have to rotate the part in sometimes. Sometimes you have to remove a bolt from the back and bring it in that way. There's a couple that did that. And sometimes, the new electric ones, you have to tell it to retract the scan tool. All right, so that's good. So then I'm left to do is going to be clean this stuff up. Hey, man. Gosh. Right, let me see what I got. Hopefully, get it smart. I got hardware. With my brake pads. I have an air filter I probably don't have. Well, fuel filter I probably don't have. That's what mine looks like. That is. Your hardware for the brakes. Leverage and stuff. Brake pads. Rotors. Usually, when I get brake pads, I get make sure it comes with hardware and it does. Okay, good. Does it look right? Yeah, it does. Pads look right? Yeah, it does. So, we'll go ahead and peel these off. Just to come out of here.
It should slide in and out easy. Should. There, see one turn and not come out like this. Poor thing. There it comes. Oh, there. Whew. Now it's free. Easy. Sometimes that's what happens. Break it free and then it decides to corroborate with you. This side. Just free. And she is. Just need more lube. Which is what I'm going to go get right now. Alright. Because of distance, I'm probably going to lose a signal. I'm going to pop this off. I'm going to put it like that. I'm going to go get the lube from the basement. Sorry about that. Oh, you know, I forgot I could talk to you while I was doing that. <laughs> I completely forgot that you had the mic with me. Mic is still working, right? Andrew? So now let me put this back on the right way. Now it's not going to be my face that wire. Okay. So here we have our caliper grease. I also need, it should be in here, a light brush. With the wire brush, clean off. All the rust builds up underneath the clips. Because that rust can build up even more. That rust can build up even more and cause the clip to push out. What I like to do is take a little grease. Kind of coat this now. Nothing rides on this. What I'm doing is I'm trying to prevent, trying to prevent the uh, rust from building up. I'm pushing out on the clips, grabbing the ends of the pads, causing them to bind. It should last as long as the brake child does. As long as the brake lasts, as long as the brake lasts. So, obviously, next time I do brakes, I'll do this again. Okay, set this down. In my bag of clips. I got two. And clip them in there.
Yeah. That fight me. Side. A little bit more grease. Do the crummy part. Let the pad ride. Okay, other side. Take care of that. Okay. Set that one there. Put that there. Let me go get a rug. Hands off. Take the rotor. Off. Over there. Look for any large amounts of rust on that. There ain't. Take the rotor. The rotor has a coating on it, anti rust. That anti rust road coating is so that if you do brakes, on the vehicle, it's gonna sit because it's you know on the car lot or whatever it's gonna be for sale. Uh, the coating prevents the rotors from rusting. Now, I keep hitting the camera. Now, every time you drive, and that's gonna wear off quickly, that anti rust coating is gonna go away. So, I don't think it's gonna keep your rotors from rusting. In the car that you drive, let's say you know thousand miles burn the coating off and then park it for a couple of days or weeks it doesn't take long and the rotors won't rust the uh, Pontiac I did brakes on it recently and it's sitting over there with the rusty rotors already over the hole find a hole put the bolt in there Sometimes you can put the lug nut on and it run it all the way down. Run it down at least 90% 90, 90 of the way, if not before. And just kind of hold the rotor in place. Okay, so this was 15. Some torque specs. As it breaks, I'm a little conscious about torquing them. Now you can look for torque spec. I believe, I believe AutoZone has torque specs online. Um, Pretty sure we do. See if you can find the torque specs somewhere. It's important to use the right torque specs. For this car, I'm going to look here. This book. This is a brakes part book from 81 to 2011. And it does give you specifications for the rotors. But what they also do is they give you torque specs. I'm looking for Ford. Ford. Put a 
focus focus 2008 2011 front this gives you your specs that first number is run out which these, these new rotors should be fine uh, minimum machining is 905 which again these rotors should be fine the torque spec for my caliper to bracket bolt that's this little bolt right here is 21 foot pounds and this bracket to knuckle is 92 foot pounds and my wheel is 94 foot pounds so 92 is what I need to tighten these two bolts to 92 foot pounds Crash. So we turn on the good torque wrench for that stabilize. Dial in 92 foot pounds. Get ourselves 15 half inch drive. Get on here. I lock the steering column. E. Rotate the sucker out like that. Down here like that, and then we tighten it to ninety-two foot pounds when the Torque wrench vibrates and beeps. It tells you you're done. And it's torqued at 92.3 foot pounds, that one. All right, when I do the other side, I'll turn it so you, maybe you guys will get a better view. All right, on to the next. We're going to put pads in. There's clips. There. These clips look a these, these brake pads look a little different. Those did. Look the same, but they look different. Well, that's the squealer right there. Yeah, yeah it goes to the top. Yeah. Oh, I see what that spring does. A little tensioner spring there. Prevent the... Prevent the pad from rattling back and forth. What you gotta do is get the bottom one first, or the top one first. Put your butt in the hole. There we go. Put your butt in the hole. Pop out. It's really tough to do this with freaking camera on your head, you know? There you go. There we go. Alrighty then. Now to put this back on, lubricate slide pin generously, but not so much that it's going to goo out. Just slide it in. Slide it in. Lubricate this one. Lubricate this one generously. I should have done that before. And then there's 14. 
head slot uh bolt was there. And now we're gonna use the other use the other fork wrench. Twenty two, did you say? That's twenty two. Okay, and that's it. That side's done. Grab all these tools. The woman on the other side. Wheel on. Just remove it like that. Throw some of this garbage away. Torque stick. This torque stick is a 95, I thought. 90 foot pound. 90 foot pound torque stick. This way, so we can get the other side easier. Let's go do the other side. All right. Do the same thing on this side. My 14 millimeter wrench. Put it on here. Loosen the bolt. Pull this up, slide it out, this is the side, got these pads out. These pads have these rubber things on both sides for some reason. It's supposed to see how that came out with that? That's not good. I don't see that. Hmm. No pieces. 15 or 90 foot pounds. It's a lot tighter than that. I should not be able to take those off by hand. They're 90 foot pounds. It's somebody just tightening it the way they feel is tight. I'm calling it a day. 
using an air ratchet and hoping hoping it's tight. Hope it's tight. Hope it doesn't fall off. Wouldn't want somebody's brake job to fall apart. You'll always find a second side will usually go quicker than the first. Take the rotor off. Put it on your scrap pile. Almost made it. The rear shoes. Rear shoes, rear shocks, hoping to do later on this weekend. Maybe tomorrow, Monday. Something nice about these coated rotors like this, they don't have Cosmo in over them. That gooey crap you gotta wipe off. It makes a horrible stink. Okay, that. Throw away the garbage. Again, compress the caliper. See how easy it moves. Move nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Let's try to go back on, set it on the turn. Tie rod. Alright. Next thing we're going to do is try to remove this. See, that one came out easy. Comes out easy like that, it's nice. But it should come out. Goop it up. Not too much goo. Just have to make it slide in there nice and easy. Slide in there nice and easy. Keep the wire brush. Remove any loose pieces of rust. These aren't too bad. Usually, it's just dusty rust like this. It's not too bad. Put a little on your finger. Coat. The lugs. Coat. The lugs. New part. Sure.
Anyway, as long as it stays in place until I get the pads on, that's all I care about. Put a little bit more lube on these. Now these are chrome plated to help slide anyways. But the lube will help them slide even better. The trick to any brake job is to try to keep the squealing from happening. Squealing is a resonance of the vibration of the pad. And you'll usually see where it's resonating from by a shiny spot somewhere on the pad. Like this was actually, this was squealing. Shiny spot there. Uh, there's some spot, shiny spots there. Those look okay. Okay, so it had to be this one. It had to be this one right there. Moving around this one. Oh no, there. That's a nice clean shiny spot. Where it's shiny is where it's vibrating and squealing. Brakes make noise all the time, but we don't we don't hear it. All we hear is that white noise sound. That hissing type sound. I, I probably you probably, probably can't hear me making that shh noise because it's probably in, within the noise filter of the background information of the vehicles on the highway behind me that I've got filtered out certain frequencies of noise I filled it out like my air compressor doesn't seem to pick up uh, I also took the birds out today when I first uh, set up I noticed the birds were chirping and I noticed the birds were showing up on the sound so I actually filtered them out Let's see if we hear any bird. I'm going to play these back today. Alright. Torque wrench back on. 92. And I jumped up a little bit. It's smooth. It's not jerked down on it. Let's go smooth. This. Oh, went from 92 to 98. All right, let's put the pads on. Usually put the inside pad on first, or outside pad on first. Because it's the one you can see best. Here. Get your butt in the hole. There's a lot of caprice on there. Second one on there. Did I leave that? I did leave that one out. No. Check, check, check to make sure. Yeah. Put some more on it just for photos. You should check it out, right? Thought I lose it, but I'm not sure. Thought I didn't want to check it out. It's not squeezing out. Okay. Make sure my winding this holds up. Slide this back on. Down. Lower that down. Put our little bolt in.
All right, that's it. Breaks are done. Two boxes of garbage. Try to wipe up any grease that you might have got on here. You can scrap metal these old pads. It's mostly steel. Head not that off. Well. So brakes don't take that long to do. You have patience, the tools, the right stuff, clean, lubricate. They'll always try to sell you, you go to one of those parts stores, like AutoZone's famous for it. See them in line. Sometimes I'll run there for something quick. Sometimes they have some good stuff. Phil Pograskis and stuff. And I see them sell brake jobs and they'll be like, you need a lube? And they always say yes, which is fine. I mean, you can buy your lube one at a time. You can buy a big container like that. I think I paid $10 for that two years ago. This torque stick is torquing these to 90 foot pounds. Torque was 93, I think. Which is plenty high enough. If it was 100, I would just add 100 with the handheld wrench. But 90 to 93 or an even 90, 95, I'd be okay with that. Extension goes with my wheel socket. This is my regular wheel socket. This is my 19 and a half and 18 and a half, or ones like that. 18 and a half is if that chrome piece falls off. 19 and a half is if that chrome piece swells up. My current scrap metal pile. Any more in there? Well, that's really it. For a great job, just gonna lower it down now. Put this out a little bit. Oh, there's the other one. Um, that's really it. I think the only other thing I want to try to do today. Oh, give it 10 minutes. Go ahead and give it 10 minutes. Uh, I think I want to program key fobs. 
have a couple key fobs here that I picked up. But uh, I think we'll do that next, and I think that's going to be it for the day. Give me about 10 minutes to lower the car down, put those tools away, get a drink of water. Uh, then I think we'll come back, program the key fobs, and call it a day on stuff to do this car. Because uh, I don't want to do anything in the back today. I got to take this car somewhere tonight. And I don't want to start messing around with the brakes in the back. I know I could do the brakes in the front easy. Brakes in the back. I don't know if that drum's going to come off easy, if it's going to be a, a giant lip I'm going to have to yank it over. I, it kind of looks like it might be new drums back there. I don't know. I don't want to take the risk. So uh, I think we'll do that. Uh, yeah, so let's end the live stream now. Give me 10 minutes. And then uh, program a couple of remotes for it. All right. Well, thanks for watching.